Greetings. JC here with a little chat about phono cartridges. A phono cartridge is the part of your turntable that actually turns the little squiggles cut into the groove into sound that you can hear. Technically, it's known as a transducer because it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. Microphones are also transducers, and so are speakers, except that a speaker turns electrical energy into mechanical energy. Got it? Good. The cartridge is the most important part of the turntable because it greatly determines what kind of sound quality you're going to get from your records. The part that actually touches the record is called a stylus. The stylus is commonly known as a needle because back in the early days of records, a steel needle was used to track the grooves of a 78. Modern turntables use a very precisely shaped gem quality diamond to track the groove. Even though it's made of diamond, the hardest substance known to man, it will wear out after several hundred hours of play. So most cartridges allow you to replace the stylus. Turntables are usually sold with the cartridge already installed. Some have integrated cartridges built right into the tone arm that can't be easily replaced, and others use some sort of mounting system that allow you to put replacement cartridges on the tone arm yourself. The two main ways to mount a cartridge are either by using a standard half-inch head shell or a system that Techniques introduced in 1980 called T4P, or P-mount. P-mount cartridges just plug into the end of the tone arm, and there's a little nut and bolt that holds it in place. Half-inch head shells use screws to hold the cartridge in the right position. Leads are slid over pins on the back of the cartridge to connect it to the system. Wiring up a standard head shell can be a daunting task for the uninitiated, but with a little patience and careful attention to the instructions that come with a new cartridge, even a novice can get the job done. Let's assume you found a nice-looking used turntable and you want to get it playing again. It has a cartridge on it, but you have no clue what shape the stylus is in, and you need to figure out what to do to get it going. You could try and find a replacement stylus online, and you might get lucky and find that the existing cartridge still sounds good. The problem is, though, that most used turntables are 20 or more years old. Cartridges are delicate devices and will wear out over time. The tiny moving parts can get stiff with age. So, you may spend money on a new stylus only to find that the audio you hear is full of distortion and very unpleasant to listen to. In many cases, the cost of a new stylus is actually close to the price of a new cartridge. So, I recommend jumping in feet first and getting a whole new cartridge. Many older all-in-one stereo systems use integrated cartridges, though. If you have one of these you're trying to resurrect, your only option might be to get a new needle. There is a dizzying array of choices when it comes to phono cartridges. Prices range from right around 20 bucks to as much as $5,000. There are professional cartridges designed for club DJs that allow you to scratch and are generally made for rough handling. There are delicate audiophile grade cartridges that promise crystal clear audio and must be treated with extreme care. And there are lots of brands of everyday playback oriented cartridges. What kind you choose is determined by your turntable and how you plan to use it. Basically, if you have a hundred dollar turntable, you most likely don't need to spend more than a hundred bucks on a cartridge. If you have a really fine audiophile grade turntable, you'll want to think seriously about investing in a really fine audiophile cartridge to go with it. If you aspire to be a super club DJ, then a professional grade card is for you. Most of us just want to play our records, so we'll talk about general duty cartridges. Most modern turntables take what is known as a magnetic style cartridge. These have a relatively low output and must use a special phono preamp to get the signal up to a level where it can be useful. The preamp also equalizes the signal to bring the bass frequencies up and turn the highs down a bit to compensate for the special way records are cut. Therefore, plugging a magnetic cartridge into a microphone input won't work. So you'll either need a receiver with a phono input or an external preamp to allow you to plug the turntable into a line level device like a computer or an amplifier with no phono input. Your new cartridge will need to be installed and aligned. P-mount tone arms usually need no alignment, but standard half-inch head shell types do. Aligning a cartridge is a delicate procedure, and fortunately there are a lot of great how-to pages on the web that explain the process in great detail. Another thing you'll have to do is correctly balance your turntable's tone arm for the correct tracking force your new cartridge needs to work properly. 
Many P-mount tone arms don't need to be balanced because the correct weight is engineered into the tone arm design. All half-inch tone arms have some sort of counterweight system that will need to be adjusted. Here, too, there are lots of great resources on the web that explain the proper procedure for adjusting tracking force. Never assume that a used turntable is set up properly already, even if the cartridge and stylus appear to be in good shape. Playing a record with an improperly set up tone arm can cause all sorts of distortion, skipping, and even seriously damage a record. Get to know a little bit about tone arm setup before playing around with used turntables. Still confused? Well, let's take a look at a widely available cartridge that will work on most turntables. The Shure M92E is a fine-sounding entry-level cart that will work with almost any turntable that takes a magnetic cartridge. The audio quality is superb for its modest price, and it includes all the hardware you'll need to mount it on a half-inch tone arm, or you can just plug it right into a P-mount tone arm. Any P-mount cartridge can be mounted on a standard tone arm with an adapter and sure includes just such a device with the M92E. Audio-Technica and Stanton also include adapters with their P-mount carts, so this type of system is generally called a universal cartridge. I've tried them all, and I like the sound quality and durability of the Shure the best. Plus, the low price for a genuine Shure replacement stylus is great for anyone doing hi-fi on a budget. There's even a special stylus just for playing back old 78s with wide grooves. Cartridges have a break-in period of around 50 hours of operation, so once you get your new cart installed, you'll actually hear the audio quality improve after a while. After that, you can expect the stylus to last for about a year, assuming you play one or two records a day. If you use it more heavily, you may want to cut the service life of your stylus back to six months. You'll know when it's time to put a new stylus on when you start to hear an unusual amount of splatter on the high end, or the surface noise of the records seems to be unusually loud. It's better to be safe and replace it periodically, though. A bad stylus can ruin your good records. The electronic phono cartridge has been around since 1925. Audio enthusiasts have been debating the quality comparisons of different brands and designs for almost a hundred years now. Audiophiles can wax on about them for hours. This introduction is only the tip of the iceberg. A quick search on Google will bring up page after page devoted to them. I encourage you to read as much as you can. It's a fascinating trip into the heart of what hi-fi is really all about. For Interface, I'm JC.